Logicality and deception. Powerful agents to the uninitiated. But we are initiated. I'm super excited! Ma'am, where's the boy section? Right there. Oh, this, this is right here. Oh, this is the boy section? Yes. Wow. Wow. Is this the boy section too? Yes. You gotta be kidding me. Wow. This is the boy section. Oh, hey, we got a boy shirt. Hold on. This is the boy section. We're in the boy section. Ma'am, is this? You gotta be kidding me. Is this the boy section too? That is for boys. <gasps> now, if this ain't pushing the agenda, I don't know what is. This is sick. Target, do better. Yes, we're at Target. Look at this. So you can look like your sister. Hmm. Isn't that something? But you just agreed it was so wrong. If, so if so why do you I said it, it was wrong to attack on the basis of race, I didn't say it was wrong to help on the basis no, of race. No, you got let's say you have one right. job and two people. Mm -hmm. And you make the decision, the deciding factor is the race of one of the people. One person is being hurt because he's the wrong race. Why would why is that okay? Because he's gotten three hundred and fifty, maybe four hundred years of benefit he from has. the How, right. Do you race. know him? Okay. Are you just so, gently hold so on? In the do you know States, that all you know about him is his race and exactly. yet you're saying that he's benefited. Exactly. And you but you don't know anything about him other than his race. So you're saying that all people of a certain color have something in common, which is Kind of the definition of racism, isn't it? No, that's also oh, the definition of discrimination because oh. all African American people in the United States have something in common. It's that they were discriminated but against. If someone, if but it's you the don't know 60s anything or the about 50s, the guy, they have something in common in that they he were subject to from lynching. He Belgium yesterday. He could have. He has no connection right. to it, but you think it's okay to deny him something because of his color. I think that the system itself, in order to fix what is the one original oh, sin of this country, So we country, need more racism to, to fix correct racism. Itself. I don't consider that racism oh, it's not at racism. All. When you do it, it's not if, racism. If I, I am it. in power I as an African-American woman, and I insist upon you walking around with one hand tied behind your back, uh -huh. but I want you to plow no, a no, field, no, no, I'm not, then I'm talking about the guy not, from, wait a second, no, no. I'm talking about the guy from Belgium who didn't do anything, who's not connected in any can, way. Can we go He's, to my analogy, no, no, at least serious. to the finish he of suffers, it. suffers, an individual suffers, yes. but you don't consider that racist. Racism because no, why? No, it's not. Because oh. the numbers of people in this country who have been disproportionately discriminated against for hundreds of years are such that there has to be a correction for it. So some there people have to, to suffer correction. on the basis of and their race. And in this country, those people have been African Americans okay. and other people So the of guy who's done nothing wrong must suffer because other people who looked like him did something yes, wrong. Yes, be because I, I, I as an African American justice? woman, yes. Yes, I okay. absolutely I call it justice. You're worrying. Well, I'm That's in charge now. <laughs> I'm want somebody who's going to get up every day. Hey, Hillary, why'd your husband visit FD Island 26 times?
Welcome back to Tipping Point. I'm your host, Kara McKinney, a teenage volunteer, firefighter, and traditional Catholic altar boy whose father is struggling through chemotherapy, leaving the 15-year-old to take care of his 93-year-old great-grandmother by himself for hours each day is the latest target of the FBI. The resulting raid on the family's home left them dragged out of their home at gunpoint, handcuffed, and then locked inside a van. Instead of tracking down the high-level criminal organizations running mass looting sprees that have cost businesses billions of dollars and have made cities incredibly dangerous and even more impoverished than they already were, well, they decided to make up a crime instead, whole cloth, to entrap a defenseless teen for political points. Because like I keep saying, the current incentives for career advancement at the FBI and the DOJ are political points. Not going after bad guys because with the way the left is going, the criminal you arrest today could be tomorrow's hero. So what these feds did was create online group chats and message boards that purposely use traditional Catholic and conservative imagery and memes to lure in users online. From there, they provided friendship and camaraderie to many lonely and disaffected people, like this homeschooled teenager who had been given a cell phone for the first time in his life so that he could better communicate care needs for the elderly relative he was caring for. And since he was bored, lonely, and was dealing with a whole host of depression-inducing situations, including recent deaths in the family, financial insecurity, and ongoing health issues of his dad and great-grandmother, he easily got sucked into these message groups. But since this was a Fed entrapment scheme, they began upping the ante, introducing more vile rhetoric hidden under the guise of edgy political insights, and asking the young teen to take pictures of himself outside with a ski mask on, or to print pictures of memes to leave at parks, and even to take pictures with his family's guns, all decisions he has since apologized for and says he deeply regrets. This didn't go on for too long, and eventually the teen felt his conscience gnawing at him, and so he deleted everything, and then he left the chat. This made the FBI believe that he had gone dark, meaning that a massive attack was imminent. But once they began investigating for a warrant, they came up empty-handed. However, that didn't stop them. The kid had only broken free of the fake rhetoric they were trying to force on him to create a crime that didn't previously exist. You know, back in the day, sting operations were done when crimes were suspected. They weren't used to create crimes that don't exist. It's the difference between infiltrating a known extremist web chat and creating one by dragging in lonely people who are incapable of anything violent, making them feel like they finally have friends. And so they say some stupid stuff just to have someone listen to them and finally care about them. And next thing you know, they're being arrested. We saw that with the Whitmer fednapping hoax in Michigan. If the kid is going to get arrested for saying extremist things, well, the people who fed him those lines were the feds. He didn't come up with this stuff on his own. So why aren't the feds being arrested for saying all that? Anyway, after the raid, the feds found nothing, of course, and so they gave up on their entrapment scheme, left the kid with a misdemeanor conviction for breach of peace, and then went after his dad, the dad and the dad's brother, for letting the teen safely shoot under their supervision because the feds said they were allowing a political extremist to shoot. It's insane, and it's bankrupted the family, and the feds don't care. They literally created a storm of pain and misery for this family who was already dealing with so much. And now adding insult to injury after making up fake crimes, they're leaving them, the family, with the bills. The father wrote, quote, I've been reluctant to seek help, but the threat of losing our home has become very real. I work with the homeless for a faith-based nonprofit organization, and my brother manages a family-owned butcher shop. My wife stays at home and homeschools our younger children while managing a small homestead. We're paying legal bills by not paying other bills. Our credit is extended as far as it can go so our kids can have Christmas. The mortgage is a few weeks behind and we have zero breathing room for any unexpected expenses at this point. Our son is racked with guilt and believes himself to be at fault for our dire financial straits. While it is very humbling for me as someone who has always provided for others to ask for help, I know it is sometimes necessary, and for us, that time has come." End quote. Now, thankfully, the Give, Send, Go page for the Ruffini family has already exceeded its $22,000 goal. Any extra money will be safe for possible future legal expenses. This is what the feds mean by those memos, remember, we got from the FBI about going after traditional Catholics and other Christians. To all those serving in the Army, in the Marines, in the Air Force, in the Navy, that you have the absolute right to refuse to take part in these criminal wars. And that's a right that all of you should exercise. You have no reason to go put your life on the line or kill and die for profit. We've been to Iraq. We've been to Afghanistan. And we know what these wars are really about. And we joined the military for many reasons. Because we need a college education. Because we need a job because we need health care. And then we joined the military 
And they tell us that our enemies are poor people in caves in Afghanistan, or poor people in deserts of Iraq. But we've been to those countries, and we know that our enemies are not other poor people abroad. Our enemies are the people that laid us off from our jobs, that denied us health care, that make it impossible to get an education. Our enemies are not in the poorest countries on the planet, but right here in the richest one. He's getting his disguise on. Okay, so he's going to wear this. I'm going to wear a mask underneath the mask. You should wear this. I'm wondering if I should wear, what do you think I should wear as a hat? Should I wear this or this? Yeah. Um, here, this is your mask. Oh my god, the America mask. Dude, 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 I'm not, I'm not fucking with you. You're, you gotta blend in. I know you can't stomach wearing it, but, like, you need to blend it. You can't, you have to have a visual identifier. Mm. I am not, you're not coming if you're not wearing this. <laughs> Alright. You, you could also wear this. If you... Yeah, the, the America hat might be my move, but we'll see. We'll keep, well, I'll bring them both in my backpack. We've got... <laughs> Fox News. <laughs> oh, wait, uh... <laughs> <laughs> CNN. We're ready to, um, we're ready. I, work. I don't know if we're committing crimes doing this, but you know, like, we're... Lisa, are you insinuating that I don't work for all three of these companies simultaneously? I, I am at I least like a little bit like, insinuating that. You feel like you think that I don't work for all of them. <laughs> they, they won't trust you unless there's a visual, like, mm -hmm. there's something visual. For the record, uh, my name is Ryan Thor. I'm the living man. I am not the uh, entity known as Ryan Michael Thor, just to clear that. Um, I am here uh, on special appearance um, under threat, duress, and coercion to challenge uh, subject matter jurisdiction and also personal jurisdiction as well. I uh, filed my paperwork for you on Friday and the clerk illegally uh, denied it. I went again this morning and filed my paperwork again for you the clerk again illegally denied it, even though I gave her a notice telling her it's a felony for her not to uh, accept my paperwork. And actually, it's in law, it's considered filed when I gave it to her. Okay. So, they're... What do you want to do today, sir? Um, well, Your Honor, I mean, I'm going to have to ask a few questions first, which, first of all, is I need to understand the nature and the cause of the charges against me, as well as I need to know, is this a civil jurisdiction or criminal jurisdiction? Okay. It's jurisdiction. Criminal. Ryan Thor is the living man. Ryan Michael Thor is the defendant in error. It's the artificial person. So thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let the record of the court show that the action against me is criminal. And now I have another question because the Constitution grants us two different criminal jurisdictions, okay? One criminal jurisdiction is under the common law and the other is under the crim uh, criminal jurisdiction of admiralty or military tribunal venue from Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution. Well, I need to know which of these two jurisdictions that uh, you intend to try me. It's very important because they, they're done different ways. The rules of civil procedure are very different in a criminal jurisdiction, obviously for common law and a military. Your Honor, I, I again, I, I need to get these other questions answered. I, you know, I need to know what the jurisdiction is and uh, I need to know also um, who the injured party is. You know, the nature and cause of this. I need to know who the injured party is. Okay. Uh, I need to know who's bringing the claim. Okay, the state is. Okay, here's the deal. Do you want to come trial there? I mean, many trial different dates. You know, come in, you can ask them all the questions, and they have to put the charges against you. So. Thank you, Your Honor, but I, I don't think you'd be violating your oath of office by doing your duty under the Constitution. Okay? I. I, you know, I, Your Honor, I, I just motion for a dismissal because uh, if this is a criminal jurisdiction, as you're claiming, I need to see a verified complaint and I need, uh, from the injured party, and I have to have an opportunity to face my accuser, as you mentioned at the beginning of this entire hearing. So who is the injured party? That's the question. Who's the injured party? Hold on a second. 
Why am I here? I don't understand why I'm here. All right, so what else? So we just have count one and count two, and we should have the proof of All right, sir, I'm going to just uh, exercise uh, my discretion. I'm going to dismiss count one and dismiss count two and just order the fees that you've already paid to um, uh, cover court costs. Okay? So No charges are pending against you. They've been dismissed. Interest of justice. So I'm, I'm letting the record show that the uh, defendant, Ryan Michael Thor, with case... CMZ 606406, all charges are dismissed. Is that correct? And whatever fees were paid are going towards court costs, okay? Uh, well, the, those fees are bail and they should be returned after dismissal. Okay. You know what? I don't have a problem with returning your fees. I don't. Thank you. All right. Wait, wait, wait. 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 The address is, is proper. Perfect. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Matthew Martinez, CMZ 3007. For the record. news from the White House. The riot control fences have been brought out of storage and they have been installed the entire length of Pennsylvania Avenue. We have a riot control non-scalable fence that now runs the entire road. The crews are still installing it as we speak. They're drilling it in. This is anticipation of tomorrow's gigantic protest, the Gaza protest, which envisions uh, as many as 25,000 people coming to the White House tomorrow uh, to protest for a ceasefire. There you can see one of the forklifts. They've been uh, working very hard. It's pouring rain, absolutely pouring rain. Hello again. Uh, I just came out here. I, I convinced my wife that we were going for ice cream, and then I snuck over here. Uh, we are going to go for ice cream. I, I, I over ice cream because, well, it's pouring rain, and I got her out of the house in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, they're anticipating about 25,000 people at least. Last time they were here, they vandalized. Uh, they tried to climb over the fence to get into the White House grounds. Uh, they spray painted all over the uh, uh, the statues and other stuff. So Secret Service and National Park Service made a decision that they were going to install these fences. And it runs the entire length of Pennsylvania Avenue in front of the White House. 
Um, these are the same riot fences that we saw during the George Floyd protests, and we saw these on Capitol Hill uh, after the January 6th. Um, they are not secure. They have not put the giant cement things behind it. They probably will. We're expecting 25,000 people here tomorrow uh, for a protest on Gaza ceasefire. And this fence is going to keep them from getting into the White House. Uh, sort of a first line of defense. Then they have, of course, the 14-foot fence at the White House. Did you say people hopped the fence? They broke the fence. They broke the fence. That center panel right there, they broke oh. it. They broke the fence. Uh, here comes the chopper, real low. Uh oh. Here comes the chopper, up top. What happened? He's injured. Oh, shit. Someone got injured by the cops.